And we'll first have roll call. Ms. Cooper Payton. Here. Ms. Hedlin. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Ms. Jones. Here. Ms. Orcherton. Yes. Mr. Patterson. Here. Ms. Salmon. Here. Ms. Snyder. Here. We're all here. All right. Uh, no changes to the agenda. Uh, so we just need next approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, anybody have any changes or questions? I move approval of the previous minutes meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, approved. Okay, no public input, so we're going to go ahead and have the first grant presentation by Jason Finkelman from the Center for World Music. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. I'm here today representing the Robert E. Brown Center for World Music. My name is Jason Finkelman. I'm Director of Global Arts Performance Initiatives, which is housed at the Cranard Center for the Performing Arts. And some of my programming includes uh, the Robert E. Brown Center for World Music and their engagement activities, as well as public performances. We had a Balinese Gamelan residency at the Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School that ran from October 3rd to November 2nd, 2016. And again, the Robert E. Brown Center for World Music is a program of the School of Music at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, promoting understanding and appreciation of music and performance traditions of the world. And we were pleased to receive funding from the Urbana Arts Grant Program, which enabled the center <coughs> to offer an interactive, hands-on Balinese Gamelan residency for fourth graders at Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School. If you're not familiar with the uh, Gamelan Ensemble, this is what it looks like. It's many instruments. There's 22 or 23 instruments that we brought into the school, and um, they were housed in the classroom over the four, four or five weeks that we were there. And with this particular program, we established I Putu Tankas Ari Hiramaya Mayena <laughs> as a teaching artist of the center. And as well, we established a first time a cl collaboration with Urbana School District music teacher, Kara Marizi. And they're pictured here Kara's clapping and Tankas is by the drum. Ms. Marizi reported that, quote, students reflected on the experience positively. Many said they were uncertain at first and a little confused, but liked it as they continued. Others enjoyed it from the beginning. I saw students who have trouble in reading or math excel at playing and listening. Over the course of eight classes, uh, Tonkis introduced 23 students to the names and basic playing techniques to the instruments and a singing style that developed from gamelan music. He strengthened their musicality through call and response rhythm exercises by having sections of the ensemble perform and listen to each other and by having the students compose and arrange music for their performance. On the final <coughs> residency day, the students gave two presentations for the third grade students. A total of 57 third graders along with 10 teachers and parents were presented with a collected collectively read introduction of the gamelan instruments and visiting teachers, followed by a performance of their gamelan composition. And so here's a photo of the ensemble, which was 23 students in total. And here's a short audio excerpt of their performance.
With the Center for World Music currently operating on extremely limited gift funds, support from the Urbana Arts Grant Program made it possible to hire Mr. Hiram Mayena, an Urbana-based artist and PhD candidate in ethnomusicology at the University of Illinois, and covered expenses needed to transport the gamelan. Funding also reestablished sustained engagement programming from the center that offers unique and culturally rich experiences to local elementary students. And as program coordinator for the Center for World Music, I truly appreciate your support advancing our commitment to offering programs for K through 12 audiences, which foster respect, admiration, participation, and learning about global practices in the arts. Thank you for your support. Does anybody have any questions about the program? Questions or comments? I have a musical question. <laughs> Is that interesting little half step that they would use from time to time? Is that common in gamelan music? <laughs> well, the, the, the gamelan orchestra, all the instruments are tuned to themselves. Mm -hmm. And so there is the shimmering sound that you get because the instruments are tuned in a way that aren't, in, they're not perfectly pitched together. Each set, e each grouping of instruments is set up in pairs and each <laughs> pair is tuned to each other and the whole group, the whole orchestra set of instruments is tuned to themselves, mm -hmm. right? So it, it allows for that shimmering effect in, in, in the music. I, I'm not sure if that's what you were hearing. Well, I was just listening to the interval, da, 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 and mm. then at the bottom they would use another half step, and I just wondered if that was a common trait in gamelan music. I don't, I'm not that familiar with it. Right, well, <coughs> I, 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 I'm afraid that I can't answer oh, that specific okay. question. But, <laughs> the, but I do know that, that of the, the orchestra is all tuned to itself, so mm -hmm. you could imagine tuning an orchestra is a <laughs> oh yeah, I, I is a very that. <laughs> tricky. Uh, um, we did have a tuner come to the University of Illinois once, and and I mean you have sanders involved in scraping the metal down to yeah. to the tuning and everything. Huh. But it was really wonderful to work with such a dynamic group of kids. Um, there was a lot of diversity in the students, and there was one. Um, student who was from Indonesia. So I think it was really nice to have had that opportunity for her to learn more about her culture, but also to kind of share with her class something from her, from her world. How did you choose which school or which class to work with? Originally we were working with Brandon T. Washington, who several years ago had worked with um, our teacher. Um, and we had a longer residency in the classroom with his class and they did a performance at the university. So he was at Martin Luther King Jr. and understood um, the benefits of having the gamelan come into his classroom. So we were working with him at first, but he left Urbana and is now in Champaign, and Kara was really happy to support the program, and it was great working with her. So that's how the, the choice of the school happened. Well, it yeah. sounds like it was a program that really engaged the kids. That, that's great. So, yeah, Anybody? she's she's very uh, very active, hands-on teacher. Mm -hmm. I've I've done a number of programs at her school uh, through the symphony outreach, and mm -hmm. uh, her dedication is just miles of, miles above. It. And I noticed in reading, reading today, she was a, a nominated for three awards through the Champaign Urbanist uh, mm -hmm. Theater Company, the Ginny Award. So mm -hmm. she's she's very active in That's all great. things related to the arts. Well, I look forward to continuing developing programming with Kara. It would be really fantastic to do so. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thanks very much. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You, Jason. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, one Eric. more. Can you just maybe 30 seconds to a minute tell us some, give us some background on the Robert E. Brown Center? Because I'm not familiar with it. Sure. I don't have all the specific dates <coughs> uh, at hand. I don't have them memorized. I'm sorry. But... Um, the Robert E. Brown Center for World Music was set up at the University of Illinois. Um, it was, um, maybe it was about 10 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I don't, I haven't memorized the exact date. But uh, Robert E. Brown was uh, one of the major ethnomusicologists in the country. Mm -hmm. And he was based in California. And at the time, the, um, uh, the, 
director of the School of Music, had been meeting with Robert E. Brown and had made arrangements to um, establish a center at the University of Illinois. There's also the Center for World Music in San Diego, which was mm -hmm. affiliated to his work, and also there um, were other incarnations and other institutions that were set up um, by Robert E. Brown. Um, Philip Jampolsky was the first director of the Center for World Music, and um, uh, our principal uh, ensemble of the uh, Robert E. Brown Center has been our Balinese gamelan. Mm -hmm. And currently the Center for World Music, so the, the uh, there was support that Philip Jampolsky was able to secure mm -hmm. uh, from the National Endowment of the Arts mm -hmm. to initiate um, kind of a larger arts and education program. And that was the principal um, kind of engagement programming that was happening with the center. After Philip left, um, they, in, they didn't want the center to completely dissolve, but what, what, as we all know, the Mm -hmm. The University of Illinois and the state of Illinois is strapped for funding right. for many years now. So um, I was asked to kind of maintain programming of the center. And so for, I would say, for about f five or six years now, I've been programming on the behalf of the center. Uh -huh. And mostly have been um, active in bringing artists into our community uh, to provide concerts that are open to the general public, but also to the campus and provide um, engagement activities with our students on the campus at the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like a, um, a very brief yeah, kind of no, synopsis of what's you. been going on. It's still housed in the Levis Faculty Center building. No, Is it's it or not. Did it get moved? Um, we lost our space at Levis, um, and we have a gam our gamelan ensemble is housed in the School of Music. Um, we have other stuff stored. Um, stored away and um, again we were operating on gift funds and through partnerships with other organizations and programs at the University of Illinois so we've had um, collaborations with different um, area study centers hmm. and um, so for example we had um, the Tuvan throat singing ensemble Alash was supported in part by um, Reese, that's the Russian East European Center, um, and uh, also from the Center for Advanced Study, also has supported some of our programming. So um, that's how we've been operating, and I hope that you know we can continue to um, receive gift funding to the center that would then also allow us to collaborate with organizations like uh, Urbana arts program as well as other uh, programs across campus that have similar interests in, in some of the programming that we're doing and hopefully it will just continue to keep growing slowly yeah but we do not have a home right no. now no I remember when it first came and it was established at Levis but I wasn't aware that it had been moved right right <coughs> the um, there's a new program on the fourth floor up there yeah all right well thanks thank very you much. thank you thank you Okay, our next uh, grant presentation is going to be from Daniel Edwards. Must be a Mac user. Yeah, there you go. I, can, I, can. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> when he went to the top left, I knew. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, that's the way I feel when I turn on my husband's Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I find anything? <clears throat> so uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Daniel Edwards. I'm currently a student at the University of Illinois uh, studying music and doing percussion performance. And I applied for a grant and for a project called Music for Solo Steel Pan. And what it was was a series of three concerts in the city of Urbana. Uh, held what, the first one at the university, uh, mainly geared towards university students, and the other two in the city of Urbana. The uh, first one at the SIP yard in downtown Urbana and the other at the Urbana Free Library. Uh, the programming was an hour for each concert and it was all music written for a solo steel pan. Most people, when they think of the steel pan, think of the steel bands playing a lot of tropical music, island tunes, kind of more popular style. And what I wanted to do was to show people that there's a, I guess, a classical side to it as well. There are people writing fine art music in a variety of styles. So to prepare for this, these events, I spent the summer from May to August practicing. I averaged about six hours a week of practicing. And I calculated about 80 hours total of practice. I used music that I had already played before that I had acquired from other people. And I also bought some new music using some of the grant funds to learn for these events. To promote the events, I uh, one of the main things I did was to create posters. Here we have an example of one of the posters that I made uh, advertising all events with all the sponsors on it. I also went to various community event boards online and posted events online. I created social media campaigns uh, through Facebook and through the venues that I worked with and the venues were also very helpful in promoting these events as well. Probably most helpful was the Urbana Free Library who went above and beyond to help promote this event. They made their own poster, had their own campaign and really I could have kept my hands off of it and it would have been just as successful. I posted the posters in various places around downtown Urbana. I basically spent a few days uh, taking a few hours walking from you know, store to store, restaurant to restaurant, asking if I could put posters up on the windows. And most people were very gracious in letting me to use their space to advertise these events. The events themselves were uh, successful. Uh, each one had a different crowd to draw. The first event I held at the university, uh, it's mainly university students that attended, and it was a good test run. Uh, most of the people that attended were people that I had known, so they're a little more forgiving with little tweaks that I had to work out. And so that helped me to refine kind of the script that I had and the uh, programming and you know, work out the better programming for the next two events. The next event I had was at the SIP yard. Here are a couple photos of me performing there. Um, this one was successful as well. It filled out about you know, most of the tables had people at them and the you know they're all uh, drinking from the bar there and while listening to music so it was a good mix of art and of the uh, local businesses one of the people that attended this event was a uh, immigrant from Germany who had told me before the event started that she had been to Trinidad where the steel pen was invented and was you know really liked the steel pen and was really excited to hear that there were people playing steel pan here in Urbana. After playing the event, she expressed her gratitude for it and said that she hoped that she could hear some more in the future. That was probably the most touching thing that happened at this particular event. The next event I had was at the Urbana Free Library. Here are a few photos of me performing there. This event was the most successful, largely in part to, to the the assistance of the library in performing the event. Uh, we had people from all walks of life, all ages, ranging from the elderly to young kids. Um, after the event ended, I let people come up and play the pan. 
So at times I had to lower the pants so kids about two feet tall could reach up and play some notes. <laughs> I had some people who could barely walk. They had canes and walkers, still trying to do their best to play a few tunes. <laughs> um, this event was so, I guess people liked it so much that Carol Inskeep, who works at the library, asked if I could come back in the future to do a event specifically geared towards children. And to me, being asked to come back and play again is the biggest compliment an artist can have. And so I'm very satisfied with the way that this event worked out. Overall, the I think the project was a success. There were less people that attended each event than I had hoped. And to me, it was a learning experience to know that I need to work with other people and work more closely with venues and have a team to promote these events rather than try to do most of the leg work on my own. The library was very helpful in helping me realize that. But although fewer people attended than expected, each event was very well received. People did say that they wanted to hear more events like this in the future. And so I'm hoping to create more events in the future around Urbana, Champaign, and schools, and wherever I can to bring this kind of music to the people that want to hear it. Overall, the event wouldn't have been possible without the grant that I had received. The funds helped me to be able to practice without stressing about other sources of income, trying to find more work to supplement myself and my family. It helped me to get materials to uh, help with marketing and help me to get music and other supplies that I needed to promote these events. So I thank the City of Urbana and the Public Arts Council for their support, and thank you. Are there yep. any questions? Questions or comments? Maybe there's a comment that's appropriate here, uh, not directly to the, well, maybe it's related to promoting uh, events that, that we're sponsoring. So after we had the team from First Friday present to us, mm -hmm. then I invited them to come to council, present mm. there. And I'm hopeful that we're going to actually make some budget space for their services next year. And what they do really, really well is social media and promotion. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, in future years for future grantees, that maybe we're going to be able to provide some assistance mm -hmm. in 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 that because um, uh, I mean you've expressed something I mean this is always uh, a concern I, I think that it's almost universal not frustration and maybe frustration is too strong a word because you know doing what you're doing is a great source of satisfaction but many of our grantees would like to have, some of our grantees have great audiences, but many of them would like to have and deserve better audiences or bigger audiences than they have. And I'm hopeful that we can provide in the future some, um, some support for that. Would it be helpful to connect him with the people from First Friday? Yes, I will email you their contact information and if you'd like, you can contact them directly. Yeah, Thank you. And also, Barb, I was wondering, you know, he was talking about maybe going to the schools as well. Is there mm -hmm. somebody there? <coughs> you could I'm the coordinator for the symphony, he, but you have to mm -hmm. be a symphony member. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but but yeah. I mean the schools, though. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, any of the music teachers. I mean, that's one of the tools we, I'm a professional musician, and that's one of the tools that, when I was in school, I didn't even know about those things, but as I became older and more established, I had to learn that you have to do a lot of self-promotion and make sure that that's equally important as your input in the practice room, mm -hmm. if not more so sometimes. Yes. And I can also give you the contact information for the music teachers, and maybe if you meet with them soon enough, the, grand, the next grant deadline is coming up February 6th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and next I think we're going to have our discussion of the open scene. So I just noticed 
just now that I did not list the staff presentation, even though I do have a presentation prepared. Well, Is let's it? do that first. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> start with artists of the corridor um, so the current exhibition is by Lori Fuller who is a landscape painter and she also makes drawings um, we had an opening reception on December 14th it was pretty well attended even though it was freezing outside um, maybe about 25 to 30 people attended um, and a couple of artworks actually sold that day which is really great, oh, great. and hopefully more will sell before the end of the exhibition um, the next um, artist featured, well, is um, Ar Rusty Clevenger's art class. So Rusty is a local art teacher, and he's shown his students' work um, in our lobby quite a few times. And I'm pretty sure this is his students at the Wiley School. And that will start in March. And um, this month's episode of Art Now features the Public Art League, which is perfect timing because we just recently installed sculptures in collaboration with them. So we interviewed Eric Robson, who was a board member, and then a PAL supporter and former commissioner, Ginny Waller, and also one of the sculptors um, whose work is um, installed this year, and his name is Ma Michael Collins. Mm -hmm. So the episode is available on YouTube and is also airing on UPTV. Speaking of PAL, um, I'm working to just um, creating some content for marketing to promote the sculptures. So I handed a postcard, so someone has it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you can see it later, but that's our proof and um, do we just have like one more change that we need to make on that postcard and then it'll be ready to go and hopefully you will take some and tell your friends about this web guide. So the purpose of this postcard is to promote the web guide. And um, this is the draft of the web guide, which is still also in development. It's taking more time than expected. Um, this is also print, printer friendly. So if you print it out at home, it can fold into kind of like a small booklet. And this blank space where the white nothingness exists, <laughs> that will <laughs> later be um, a, like an embedded map. We're trying to figure out a way to make the map as user-friendly as possible. Right now, the best we can do is just to um, put a picture of the map there, and then when you click on it, it'll lead you to Google Maps, the website. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll find a better, even easier way. And this has all the sculptures. The font looks really funky here. It's a slightly different font on my computer. So that's the sculpture project. I and have a question about your postcard. Would you consider putting the URL on the postcard or one of those scanning? Oh, I like a chip, QR code. QR, uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. On the post, well, even if it's yeah. on the bottom, the back side where you, you send the postcard. That's a great URL. idea. Mm -hmm. It's actually already printed, but oh. not a large amount. So the next batch, we will, uh -huh. we can include the QR code. Yeah. yeah. because you can't put it at the bottom on the back. Okay. Because that's where they put the barcode thing. Oh, that's true. In the oh. post office. Yeah, it could yeah, get yeah, all yeah, big yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. Okay. Thank you. And moving on. Um, open scene is moving along. We got a lot done just the past two weeks, and this is a discussion item, so I'll save it. I'll save the details for a little bit later. And last month we had a discussion on the Boneyard celebration about how we were going to have this participatory art installation with the threads and poles. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our partner in this project actually is moving to DC um, and leaving his, you know, teammates here and I think another teammate is also moving somewhere else so um, they said that they're unable to take on this project for now um, so I do have still a couple of ideas um, mostly kind of like what we did last year and two years ago so music maybe some kids activities at the park and um, we usually have the bubble guy come in and make big bubbles and that's always a hit <laughs> and food trucks so um, 
since I have a limited time left, I will um, pass on these ideas to Morgan, who's right here. Morgan is the super intern. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, and Morgan will take on the planning for the Boneyard celebration. And actually, he also just delivered to me the printed postcard, so if you want to take home several, and the next batch will include the QR code. And this picture is from last year. We had a capoeira group perform. Um, it was music and um, like a martial arts dance performance. It was a very cold day. Um, we still had some people show up, but I think the first year, two years ago, was a better turnout. For our marketing, um, Facebook, could Twitter, Instagram are still growing. Oh. Yeah, could, uh, just sure. before we leave completely the Boneyard celebration, mm -hmm. unless you've already talked with them, or um, I think a really interesting group to see if they want to be involved is the Celebration Company. They're right yeah. there, and they will do sometimes for events, you know, make little... Uh, you know, sub sub plays uh, that, uh, for example, I mean, they perform in, in you know, like the Fourth of July parade. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, and I and and especially since they're right there, they might consider it a um, a good promotional thing for for their theater. And and they would do a terrific job. They're very talented. And, yeah, we can and definitely reach out to them and try that. Well, along those lines, I know that the puppeteer who we supported last season, mm -hmm. uh, Ann Newman. I know she's trying to develop some new programs, some puppet shows and add live music, and she might be interested in presenting a program if you're looking for something for children and families. That's a great idea, too. Or their guild in general. You know, yeah. That's a bigger group than one person, but I know she's looking for some s to do some expansion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, so in terms of marketing, um, our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are growing still, maybe a bit slower this month compared to previous months just because it's the holidays and I didn't make as many posts. Um, and we also have one ad running on Smile Politely. It should not be this wide. This is not proportionate, but um, mm -hmm. this is running for the month to promote the new Art Now episode. And we also have an ad for, um, to promote the Urbana Arts Grant Program. I thought that episode turned out well. I watched it this afternoon, and Ginny happened to come by and on another matter, but I happened to watch it after she left, and I thought it was well done. Good. I, I don't know if it's more challenging for Jason, who's the editing extraordinaire, um, but I thought it's maybe it'll be challenging because it's three different people, so mm. setting the it's flow tricky. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But thank you. And lastly, the Arts Grant Program is still accepting applications. We have a deadline on February 6th, um, and this year we have $48,000 available, which is slightly more than last year. Um, and this is thanks to the CLACS, or the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies, who donated $500 to support this project. And um, we've been promoting this grant program through social media, e-newsletter, uh, Smile Politely, and some print materials. And we also held two workshops. Um, the one at the IMC was really well attended. And I've been answering questions, so hopefully our applications start coming in soon. And I think we'll soon send invitations um, to members of the community who, who can serve as um, jurors. And so usually each we have two different groups of um, jury. To, so each group um, juries two categories from the four categories available. And usually each group has at least one representative from the Public Arts Commission. So you may hear from me. And especially if you haven't served in any um, jury whatsoever, maybe because you're new. Yeah, I would really encourage you if you're a new member to yeah, participate. It's, it's a fascinating experience. It's it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all for my staff report. Okay, go ahead and talk about open scene then. Okay, um, so open scene. We have selected the four artists who will work with um, youth in the spring semester, and 
um, the selection process involved first a jury meeting consisting of um, members of the USA UCIMC and members of the Public Arts Commission and also local community members. And Jason pa and Erica here um, serve in that selection committee. I don't know if you want to say a few words, maybe share your experience. It was, it was great. It's one of those, uh, I think we all were on the same page most of the, most of the time, the whole group of people. And um, uh, when we weren't, it, our, our minds were changed in good ways. Like someone would bring something up like, oh yeah, you're right. Okay, we should pick this person. Um, but it's always good when you're like, you're deciding between two people that are both great. <laughs> That's always a good thing. So it was, it was, it was fun and easy, and it was, it's exciting because all the people. I think the people that we picked for them to, to, for them to narrow down, were all really great. Even some of the people we didn't pick were really great. <laughs> yeah, we actually set out to pick eight, and we had so many really great ones that we had to just send or send nine and see what they thought from that. So, yeah. um, but they were, by by and large, really great, and really connected with the community too. So as Erica mentioned, um, the goal of this uh, jury meeting is to select the finalists. Um, we thought eight finalists, but we ended up with nine finalists. And then the youth participants voted from those nine finalists because we want this to be about the youth participants and we want to hear their input as well. Um, but the judging was based on three main criteria. So first is artistic quality and then any experience in engagement, especially with young people and especially also with uh, marginalized communities and appropriateness um, of the themes explored or artistic you know, styles for a public event. Um, anyway, we presented the nine finalists to um, open scene participants, so some adults and some youth, and they voted, and, and then the staff like counted the votes and had a discussion about it, and we ended up with four selected artists. So we selected two from Champaign-Urbana and two from Nationwide, and the two from Champaign-Urbana are Mother Nature and Derek Lindsay. Um, they're actually both musicians, actually. Uh, Mother Nature is a hip-hop duo who's based, who they were based in Champaign-Urbana, but they've actually moved to Chicago recently, but they're very much, um, they know Champaign-Urbana very well. And Derek Lindsay's approach to music is less um, making, uh, less performing and more like about making music, so he, um, is planning on teaching the youth about like recording and uh, music business and publishing and things like that. And for the non-CU artists, we have a poet. Her name is Andrea Perkins. Um, and she's not, also not only a poet, but she's also a visual artist. Uh, so I think she's going to do a mix of those. And also there's a group, which I like to call Hill Waters to be short, but it's actually a longer name um, that I can't remember right now. But it's a collaboration between four artists and it's a theater collaboration. And yeah, I, I guess the group name is just like all their names together. Um, but these are fantastic artists. Um, as Erica and Jason mentioned, it was kind of hard to choose and we had a pretty big pool and I'm excited. And um, so, just as a refresher, each artist selected will have a weekend in the spring sometime, sometime between February and April, and they will come to UCIMC that weekend to lead um, like a weekend long activities. So we're thinking maybe Friday, it's probably going to be introductions, maybe some like short exercises to um, introduce the participants to what's coming the next days. And then Saturday and Sunday will be the arts workshops themselves um, with some dialogues. Um, and we are trying to get the artists to connect their artistic discipline with like a real life social issue. Um, could be like, I don't know, racism or um, any sorts of issues that the youth are interested in. Saturday and Sunday, it's all those things, workshops, dialogues, exercises. And then at the end of Sunday, we'll have a culminating event that's open to the public where the youth can showcase what they've been working on and it'll be free and open to anyone to come in. And any other comments or questions about Open Scene? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's coming along nicely. Yeah, okay. it sounds like you've done a great job in organizing it. Thank you. For a first venture, it sounds like you've got a good start for the beginning of a new venture. Yeah, um, it's very process heavy, so sure. I think 
we've done planning for over a year. <laughs> it's finally coming together and the events are finally happening in a couple of months, so that's good. Okay, did anybody have any uh, additional announcements they wanted to make other than the one that we're sorry that Pauline's leaving? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so that's the big news. Um, <coughs> and I think you had a chance to um, meet Morgan probably. Morgan has been with us for a year. Because you got, got through like one grand cycle at least. Um, but we're l really lucky to have Morgan. And um, after January 20th, um, Morgan and Brandon both will take over some of my responsibilities. I have no doubt that it will be a smooth transition. Um, and yeah, so thank you both for all your help. Well, thank you. You've done a wonderful mm -hmm. job here. Thank you. You really have advanced the program, I think, mm -hmm. and made it more diverse and more interesting. So, thank so you. is it appropriate to ask you in this public meeting, or would you prefer to answer in private, what is the next chapter in your life? Um, so to be closer to family, I am going to um, start splitting my time between CU and Singapore. Mm -hmm. So that's the next big thing, but that's not uh, exactly a short commute <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, what do you, uh, maybe what I'll start like an airline credit card is my plan. Yeah, <laughs> well, you get lots of airline points. That's true. <laughs> is your husband still in medical school? here? Yeah, he is. He is. Um, so that's the plan for now. And professionally, nothing I can share yet because nothing is really set on stone yet. But I do have a plan and I'll keep you updated. Great. Well, please do. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I, I remember that, you know, I've never flown to Singapore, but I've flown to cities in southern China. And it's from Chicago to southern China is approximately halfway around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think we're exactly halfway around the world. It's a 12-hour time difference, so yeah. I assume from there oh. that it's <laughs> <laughs> just halfway around the world. <laughs> That's killer. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And you fly right over the North Pole. What a view. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, I'm excited, but also sad. And stay tuned for maybe a going away gathering next yeah. Friday. We don't um, have the details set yet, but this fr uh, next Friday. Friday. Okay. That will be my last day. Great. Not great, but <laughs> 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 and I just want to thank you all for being really good commissioners. Mm -hmm. I, I just find every one of you just really wonderful to work with, and I learn a lot. Yeah, see, that's actually the reason I asked you this is to get you to say that in mm. public. <laughs> 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 just fishing for that. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of announcements. Sure. Go ahead. Um, well, first, I have the sculpture award from PAL and the postcard circulating. So if you want to take a look at that, I think the PAL award is really yeah. cool and it's really heavy. It's yeah, it went oh, yeah. that way. Yeah. Oh, OK. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be sure to check it out before the end. And that's the postcard um, for the sculpture. So if you want to touch it. <laughs> and I also have some copies here. So please take home some and then write your friends or just give it to someone who might need a postcard and start spreading the word. Or actually wait maybe four days until we actually publish the web guide before <laughs> you can do so. Might so be a good idea. Give me three to four days. <laughs> and it'll be on, on the Facebook page and, and our social media sites, right? So yes. we can share that too as well. Yes, definitely. With yes. Extra reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. That's a good point. Um, and then, so we do need, in this transition, if you are able maybe to, you know, take an extra step to even help even more, um, we'd probably welcome some help in um, art now, which Sarah Jones has been doing interviews and it's really helpful, but um, maybe if one other person wants to do interviews, it's kind of fun. You get to meet artists and see their studios. Um, send me an email if you're interested. And also, after this, we're going to Crane Alley just to celebrate the holidays. So hope you can make it. Okay. Very good. Uh, I guess I will go ahead and move that we adjourn. Can I have a second? I'll Someone? second that. We're adjourned.